Jessica Ortner, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've wanted to connect with an expert in your particular space for some time now. And when I was doing my research in the space, I obviously knew your name, but the work that you've been doing and really kind of bridging, which we'll talk about in a moment, tapping with the medical-based community or natural health-based community really sets you apart. So I want to thank you for the work that you've been doing. And also, I'd love for you to be able to explain a bit more about this topic of tapping and uh, potentially how it's helped uh, many other people that you've come in contact with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm excited for everyone who's listening because my intention is that by the end of our time together, everybody has a new tool that they can incorporate into their personal life and also share with other people around them. This is a really simple technique. It's a stress relief technique called tapping. And the reason that it's called tapping is because what we're doing is we're using our fingers and we're tapping on these acupressure points that are on our body. Now, when we're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, it's not a sensation that we just experience in our head. We feel it with our whole body. Sometimes we have that tightness in our chest or in our stomach, shortness of breath. And so oftentimes for, especially for a certain amount of people, trying to think their way out of a negative thought can be very difficult, right? Just trying to use the mind can seem very difficult. Here we're using the body. We're actually getting clear on the thought that's creating the physical response. And as we get clear on that thought, we begin to stimulate these meridian points, these acupressure points. And what that does is it sends this calming signal to the brain by relaxing our body using these points. We're sending the signal to our brain saying, hey, you're safe, you're okay. Because when we're having that fight or flight response, I'm sure this is something that you talk about often, and many people who are listening who are practitioners know about this, but when we're having that fight or flight response, we're getting a bad email, we're getting a bad phone call, and our body is reacting as if our life is in danger. You know, we have that overproduction of cortisol, we have adrenaline rush, we have our heart palpitating, and so our body is getting ready to fight or to flee. And so our number one job when we're stressed is to let our body know that we're safe. Our number one job is to let ourselves know I am safe because if you can feel safe within a stressful thought and your body is calm, that's when you're in control and you can better navigate the situation. You can think clearly, you can problem solve. So tapping is all about calming the nervous system, calming your body so you can really think clearly and feel empowered. It's a great explanation. I like that. One of my favorite uh, sayings that many people have used inside of uh, NLP and they've used it like with Tony Robbins is that your psychology can affect your physiology, but your physiology can also affect your psychology. Because as you said, sometimes it's really difficult when you're in a really tough spot to say, okay, breathe, relax. Like you're trying to like talk yourself through it, whereas you could actually begin to change your physiology. So we've talked about it before on the show for confidence, where we pull our shoulders back, we lift our rib cage up, we you know puff ourselves up. But this is a way that has been clinically proven, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments, to decrease that stress-based response. And so that's why I just think that these are, we always talk about biohacking and, and all these different things in the space, and a lot of it's not healthy, but this is a really healthy technique that has been around for what, about 30 years that just most people still are not familiar with. It's been about 30 years. Is that correct for how long tapping's been around? Yeah, it was the um, late 80s. Late 80s. Okay. So if you could share that story, I'd love to hear it. Yes, absolutely. So you talk about the power of the body. And uh, we have an app called the Tapping Solution app. And we give free memberships to all first line, res um, first line responders and anyone really in the medical field can get this. If you are helping other people during this pandemic, we want to support you with this app. And so mm. there was this nurse who was using it and this was in last March in Yale Hospital. So we're talking about Connecticut here. Um, lots of stress, lots of unknown. The, you know, she's putting people on respirators, um, sorry, ventilators, sometimes up to 10 to 15 people per hour. Um, mm -hmm. It's not working. They're all just scrambling to try to figure out how can they help people. So it's an incredibly stressful situation. At the same time, her husband gets COVID, he's a pilot, and then 
she loses her sense of smell and gets tested and realizes that she has COVID and she has two young kids. And, you know, all this stress is happening, all of this unknown, constantly being in that fight or flight response. And she wakes up at three o'clock in the morning and she has an experience that she has never had before. Her teeth are chattering as if she's freezing. She's having trouble catching her breath. She's wondering, is this COVID? She's walking around and she realizes I'm having a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And she opens up the app. Well, actually, before she does that, she she wakes up her husband and she says, talk me through this. Like, I, I just, I can't control my body. Like, like help me. And so he's mm -hmm. trying to calm her down and the words aren't helping. Talking about it isn't helping. And so we have a tapping meditation for panic attacks and it's just a few minutes and she spends a few minutes tapping and she writes to us saying it was the only thing that relaxed my body. It was the only thing that stopped my teeth from, from chattering. And so that was just one of it, an example of how sometimes an emotion can be so physical that we need to have another modality that uses the body and not just uses the mind. Because in that state, when she woke up at three o'clock in the morning, it wasn't a conscious thought that was creating that panic. And that's why I think this is so powerful. I agree I, without a doubt. I just think that it's too difficult, you know, and, and also what a, I think her husband obviously tried to help out, but what a difficult position. He's trying to help talk her through it. He's not a psychologist, I'm sure, no, or a trained psychiatrist. So it's like, well, what am I supposed to do in this situation? You want to help someone out. And so that's why this is essentially, you are being coached through a very simple set of sequences that can then work along what traditional Chinese medicine would call the meridian uh, on the meridians of the body. And in Ayurvedic medicine would be called the marma points. And it begins to bring the body back into balance. In natural health, we're always talking about not pushing the body too far in any one direction, but actually bringing it back into balance. And if you can bring your breath with that and your intention, as you mentioned, to start off this show, um, I think that's the way to do it. I would love to hear. So People may have heard about tapping in different names. Like I know it as the emotional freedom technique only because that's the first time I ever heard about it. Like it was called this. What are some different names? And uh, is it all the same thing? Right. So it really started with a man named Dr. Roger Callahan, who a, was a psychotherapist who started by calling it TFT, thought field therapy. And depending on what challenge you had, you tapped on different meridian points. And then a man called Gary Craig, who was uh, an engineer, studied under Roger Callahan and realized that it was very difficult to memorize, OK, I have this problem. I need this sequence. Mm -hmm. And so he thought, how can I make this easy for everyone to understand? And so with some trial and error and experimenting, he chose nine points that tend to be the most effective. Mm -hmm. And so that was called EFT. And since then, there have been so many people who have begun to use it, so many psychologists who incorporate it into their practice. And the reason that we tend to call it tapping is that it's a general term. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're doing EFT, there's a certain way of doing it. When we're talking about tapping, there's a little more flexibility with the term. So we do follow more of an EFT model like Gary Craig. We focus on the same nine points. And there's other practitioners who incorporate more points because there are other points in the body that help you relax. Again, we focus on nine, mostly out of simplicity. They're easy yes. to remember and they're easy to access. Yeah, I agree. I like the nine point methodology. That's how I've always learned it. And you want it to be instinct. Like you just want to do it so many times that you don't have to, okay, where do I tap next? Because then you're taking your mind off what's really most important. So I really like that. And actually a question that just came to mind that I wasn't even planning on asking you today is, can you do it for someone else? Let's say someone does not have the ability to do the tapping themselves, or maybe it's a baby or something. Can, can you help someone else with this if they're not able to tap? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the number one thing is consent. So as long yes. as you have consent from the other person, you can do the tapping on them. What I think is amazing about this technique is a lot of therapists recommend it to their clients in between sessions because it is something that you can do on your own. I think that's what makes it so powerful. But if you can't tap, then you can have someone else 
Also, kids love tapping. They love tapping before bed. And I hear a lot of parents say, my kid will start tapping and then he'll get kind of drowsy and ask me to tap on him. And so so then they'll take over the tapping. The key is stimulating these acupressure points. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter who does it as long as obviously there's consent. That's great. That's great to hear. And actually, I've never done it. I have two young daughters. Uh, every year, they seem to be getting older, but they're still young girls. And uh, I want I'm actually going to do it with them tonight. I'm, this will be the first time. Uh, they're obviously into natural health. I've been uh, raised in that way, my wife and I, uh, since they were born. But we've never done uh, tapping before. So this this will be a nice before bed. Like most people's kids, probably like for whatever reason, they could be tired at dinner. And then 10 minutes before bed, they get all this energy. So this will be a fun one for us to try uh, tonight. Definitely. And it's easy for kids to do because it is so physical that they tend to enjoy it more, right? You're not Mm. telling them to sit still. They're actually able to fidget in a sense as they tap on these points. So um, they tend to really enjoy it. Yeah, we'll go through those points in just a moment. But I would like to hear from your vantage points, because one of your skill sets is really the knowledge behind uh, and the research how tapping is actually helping people. Because when you first see it, you say, okay, you know, this is just another method and it's some crazy natural health based modality. But when you look at it, not only is it's really survived almost 40 years now, but we're looking at it being, I know there's at least 100 peer reviewed studies. So that's pretty impressive. And you have your own anecdotal research, which I value for most practitioners as much as uh, actual lab clinical research because it's not in the real world. However, I do want to match it with real world research whenever we have it. If you could share some of that, especially what you were talking about earlier with anxiety, PTSD, depression, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. There has been a lot of research. When I started to do this uh, over 10 years ago, the research wasn't there. It's really been in the last five years that it's absolutely Mm. skyrocketed, not just in the United States, but really around the world. There's also 50 other studies in foreign languages as well. So it's been really exciting. And I want to give a shout out to Dr. Peter Stapleton from Bond University in Australia. She wrote a book called The Science of Tapping, and she's really Mm. a leader in the research. Um, So when it comes to the research, there's a few things that really stand out. The big thing is the the research shows that it works. And I think that's one of the things we have a lot of uh, people talking about how it works, but it's different when you can actually measure the body and see how it's impacting the body. So there was a study, it was run by Dr. Peter Stapleton. This is actually, um, she replicated this study. So this study had already existed, but you know, with studies, the more studies you have, the better. So she replicated this study where she took a group of people and one group just read magazines. They were the control group. Another group read about stress relief. So they're reading, you know, a blog, they're reading things about mindfulness, about how to relieve stress. And the third group is actually doing the tapping. And what they measured was cortisol. Now, as many of your listeners know, cortisol is often known as the stress hormone, and it can be measured really easily through your saliva. And so she measured everybody before, and then she measured everyone after, and the results were really phenomenal. When it came to the group that read about stress reduction, their cortisol went down by 19%. It's a pretty significant number. If you spend your time reading about how to release stress, it definitely helps. The group that was the control group actually went up 2%, which I find interesting. I think nowadays, any magazine you read or any news you read can be a little bit stressful. But the tapping group, it went down 43%. A 43% drop wow. in cortisol um, through the tapping. And so that was one amazing study. The other study I that's one of my favorites, that's also by Dr. Peter Stapleton. Um, the reason that I think this study stands out is because it was the first time that we could use an MRI machine to scan the brain to see what's happening to the brain with tapping. And in this study, what they did was they focused on women who had um, challenges with obesity. So these were women struggling with obesity who had a lot of food cravings. They really felt like they didn't have control. 
And so they put them in the MRI machine and they started to show them photos of, you know, the sweets, the chips, the foods that create cravings. And you see the pleasure centers of their brain lighting up. You see their whole brain. It's like fireworks. And then they took one group. They did nothing. It was the control group. Then the other group, they did tapping and they tapped while focusing on cravings. Cravings are not simply physical, they are also emotional. And so they really looked at the emotional aspects around cravings. And a few weeks later, they did the same experiment where they put everyone back into the machine, showed them these photos. And not only did the group who used the tapping say, hey, my cravings are gone. I can have it or I cannot have it. I'm in control. Not only were they saying that, but you could actually see the difference in their brain. You look at the brain scan before and after, and it's not lit up like a Christmas tree the way it was before. And so that's fascinating to show how the brain is reacting to these acupressure points. Harvard also did a really fascinating study, but this was using um, acupuncture, so acupuncture needles but it's still using this concept of meridian points. And it also showed that it impacts the brain. And so the research that we have right now is really studying how it impacts uh, hormones in the body, how it impacts how the brain reacts. And there's also been some great studies about genetics, how it impacts your genetics, genes that turn on and off. And so there's been a lot of great studies and it really feels like we're just in the beginning because of our um, app, we've actually got interest in from some universities who want to study it. Um, I'd love to share kind of some of the the research we, we've. I don't know if you'd call it research, but um, we have this app, and with tapping, you always ask yourself on a scale of zero to ten, how stressed do I feel? You measure mm-hmm. it. And the reason you do that is because if you go from a 10 of anxiety to a seven, that's a pretty significant drop. And it can encourage you to keep doing the tapping for a few more minutes. So it's always helpful to just know your before and after. Well, we program that in the app because that is just a part of tapping without realizing that all of a sudden we'd have all this data. We'd be able to see that, you know, the first study, it was 260,000 plays of our releasing anxiety tapping meditation in under 10 minutes, the average decrease of anxiety was 41%. Um, Just yesterday, I looked at the numbers again, because the plays for that tapping meditation are up by up to 500,000. So it's had 500,000 plays so far. So I looked at that number yesterday, a little nervous because bigger, a lot more plays, you're wondering like, is the number going to change? And it didn't, it was still at 41% decrease of anxiety, um, average of 41%. Mm. So we're really beginning to see uh, that this is working and that people are sharing that it's working. Without a doubt. I mean, I'm like the whole time you're saying this, the practitioner in me wants to send, you know, uh, 5,000 of your people to saliva samples so that they can do a sample before and then 10 minutes later because, or, or maybe, you know, 30 minutes later, because you would be able to see that difference and you have the audience now, like that's the amazing thing. So, you know, well, I really believe that this is the future of medicine uh, with people being able in communities like this. So for example, it's really difficult to get people into a lab and to do a blood draw and all these different things, but not difficult at all to get a grant or whatever it might be and and send everyone to salampa uh, to uh, sample saliva bottles and they just fill those up before and then after a session and that you you'd be able to see quantifiable data right there and that'd be pretty remarkable but hey I completely agree when you look at the um, hypothalamus and pituitary gland they're controlling all the hormones in your body. So they're telling your thyroid what to do. Your estrogen has a feedback loop there. Your cortisol has a feedback loop there. And and if you're able to rewire that in that short a period of time, I mean, that's that's pretty phenomenal. And no, there's no medication or supplement or anything like that that can work that quickly. So that's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I think one of the downsides of tapping is that it works for so many things. And the reason I say that is because people are automatically skeptical. They're like, Mm -hmm. I don't get it. There's tapping for releasing anxiety. And then there's something about back pain. So how is it that one modality can work on these two things? The tapping is working on 
calming your nervous system and reducing yes. stress. Yes, and exactly. when you do that, your body reacts differently. And so if you have been dealing with chronic back pain for the last 10 years, it is there's not just physical pain there, but there's emotional frustration. There is the exhaustion of not having answers, the, ex the emotional exhaustion of the pain. And when you can begin to do some tapping on that stress, on that weight, and you release that, your body is able to relax and do what it's meant to do, which is recover. So it's not that it's a, a magic technique and it's not so much even the tapping that's helping with your back pain, it's your relaxation and then your body's ability to feel better and recover. No, you're a hundred percent right. I mean, that's the thing is it's, it's not the, it's a, it's a panacea, but not a panacea as people think about it because 90% of illnesses or disease in the body goes back to stress. Stress creates inflammation. It creates an imbalanced immune system, imbalanced uh, hormones. And so that could just manifest as different things in different people's body. So you'd be able to get the same results with meditation, with many other modalities, but people are not doing those things or able to do those things. And I find that sometimes if you're allowed to physically be active in our Western-based mindset, doing something like type tapping, you can get a lot of those same benefits and, and be active, be a part of the process rather than just quieting your mind and sitting there. And a lot of people have a challenging time doing that. Yeah, definitely. I am an I was born an overthinker. So I have loved <laughs> tapping since the moment I heard about it. That's great. And and for those people, uh, I mean this. I, I just give it a little, so I have a 400 page book and I have a, just one paragraph, but inside of that paragraph, there's actually EFT under emotional balance. So part of, uh, I mean, my, my specialty is in functional medicine, and Ayurvedic medicine as integrative health practitioner, but, um, part of the de-stress protocol I use about four out of those eight modalities are all stress, mind, mood, because if you can't get those under control, it's, it's, you can only take so many B vitamins and magnesium and they're great, <laughs> and they're but great. you, you do have to work on the actual body itself. And so that's why this, again, this is quick. We're going to start to go through a little bit of it now, but you said in under 10 minutes. So this, before we, we kind of share a session, I would love people to know. So we know it can work in the moment, you know, and if you're bringing your breath to it, if you're bringing your intention to it, then it's going to work better. But how many have you seen any research? How many sessions, weeks does it take? How many times per day to start to get those longer lasting benefits? So the, I don't have that many much research, at least at the front of my mind, like at least memorized mm -hmm. that shows how many, a lot of these studies have been an hour. So it's like, you know, you tap for an hour and then you test the body afterwards. Um, there was a study with, again, uh, Dr. Peter Stapleton at Bond University. They've just been doing so many studies on this. And she did a longer trial with women um, with obesity. And I think it was a four week trial. And they also mm -hmm. followed up six months later to check in on the weight loss and the cravings. And they found that the weight loss that the women experienced when dealing with their cravings lasted. Um, mm -hmm. So they checked six months and I think they're now following up to a year. That's the only one that comes to mind. Um, but when it comes to, you know, the magic question, how often do I need to do this to get the results? Everyone truly is different. Obviously, with something like a panic attack, you do feel that instant relief. And if you're dealing with something like challenges around weight loss and body confidence. This is, I wrote a book about this. This has been my big struggle in my life and one of my passions. That is something that can take some consistency because we have been trained for so long to try to hate ourselves happy and to criticize ourselves thin. We are running these patterns. And so if it's something that you've been struggling for a long time, it will take some consistency. But when I talk about consistency, I'm talking about 10 minutes a day. You know, just yeah. giving yourself a few minutes a day to address this. And everyone is is so different that I there's no blanket statement of how long it takes. But I have found that when people do have their breakthrough, those breakthroughs tend to last. Yeah, and, and I, I don't have any specific proof on this, but I would equate it to something like um, hypnotherapy with NLP that I've talked about before is 
this is a little bit different, but you're working on the same thing. Meaning if there's a trauma or there's a subconscious blockage and you're working through it with the nervous system because it's stored in your nervous system as part of the subconscious, then if you relieve it, you relieve it. It, there is no, it doesn't come back because it's gone. So that's how I look at it. And how long does it take? Well, I mean, I guess that's different for each person. How deep is the trauma? You know, how long has it been there? Um, so, you know, but just like meditation, two 10 minute sessions a day. And if you can do it somewhere upon starting the day, I don't know if you would agree with this. It's like, it sets the tone for the day. And then if you can do it to relieve that tension about all the things that if they do tomorrow, it might be nice to do it at night. That's, that's kind of how I always think about it. But let me know your thoughts because you've had so many sessions with people. Yeah, I agree. I think morning and evening tend to be important moments because they are moments of of reflection, at least, uh, you know, every, everyone's different. Me personally, I am the end of the night tapper because Mm -hmm. that is when I feel like I can get really in my head and I can overthink and being able to release that and have a good night's sleep. It sets me up for the morning. It's like my good morning starts with a good night. And so I love tapping in the evening for others. They really feel that stress first thing in the morning doing them um, both is ideal, but it's being able to check in with yourself and ask yourself, when am I struggling? Like what part of the day is tough? And maybe it's four o'clock, right? Maybe it's right before work ends and giving yourself that 10 minutes to self-soothe and to balance yourself so you don't spiral into those bad habits. You don't spiral into the overeating or spiral into saying something you don't mean to someone you love because you're feeling irritated. So I think it's being able to reflect on yourself and finding those moments when you feel that you're the most vulnerable and doing your tapping then. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and you brought it up. I was, I was thinking about for people that go through cravings mid afternoon or after dinner, that would be a great time to just kind of preempt that right before you have it. Or as you know, that you're going to be moving into that craving zone, you know, the kids are in bed, you're starting to wind down, you want to get on the couch and you're like, Oh, it might be nice to have some ice cream or some cookies or some popcorn or something right now. That would be a great time to, to work uh, to work the process. So, uh, would you mind taking us through a session and kind of showing us how it does work just as a, as a baseline? Yeah, I would absolutely love to. So I'll start by teaching these nine points. Mm -hmm. And if you have some show notes, I can give you a, um, an illustration as well. Um, but I'll talk, I'll talk everyone through it. So the very first point is the side of the hand. And this is the side of the hand point. It's often called the karate chop point. You're using two fingers and just underneath your pinky on the fleshy side of your hand, you're tapping. It doesn't matter what side of the body that you tap on. Um, and even as we go through these points, you can tap on both sides of your body or you can just choose choose one. So the next point is the eyebrow point and it's where the hair of your eyebrow begins right on the bone. So I'm using two fingers and I'm tapping where the hair of my eyebrow begins right on the bone. Now you're gonna follow your eyebrow until you find yourself on the side of the eye, still on the bone. Great. The next point is underneath the eye on the bone, then underneath the nose between the upper lip and the nose. We have underneath the mouth, which is the crease between your lower lip and your chin. We have your collarbone point. If you feel your collarbone point and on either side you go down an inch, you're gonna hit it. You can also use your whole hand and tap on your chest and you'll stimulate that point. The next point is underneath the arm, and it's about a hand width from your armpit. For the women out there who are wearing bras, it tends to be where your bra strap lies. And then we have on top of the head. So those are the nine points. And no matter what you're going through, you focus on those nine points. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one of the things that we share about tapping is that it is this beautiful combination of these ancient Chinese acupressure points and modern psychology. And the modern psychology aspect of it is this new understanding that trying to push through our feelings or deny our feelings is really what holds us back. One of the best things that we can do for ourselves is have a moment to say, even though I'm angry, I accept how I feel. Mm 
I accept myself and how I feel. It helps neutralize judgments that we're experiencing about our emotions. And it really helps us have an honest conversation with ourselves. When it comes to the tapping, you always start with how you're feeling. And a big part is just giving yourself permission. I'm allowed to have these feelings. And so when you start the tapping, the only time you're tapping on the side of the hand is in the very beginning of the process when you're saying the setup statement. And the setup statement is, even though I have this anxiety, I accept how I feel. For some people, um, traditionally, it was even though I'm stressed or even though you know I have this experience, I, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. That is a very powerful statement, but for many, it's too far too soon. Mm -hmm. So simply saying, I accept how I feel can open us up to having that honest conversation. If you're tapping with a kid, saying that they accept how they feel might not land, but you say, even though I'm really upset about my test, I'm still a good kid. You're letting, you're starting with stating how you feel and letting yourself know that that feeling is okay. Mm -hmm. And so once you do that three times, you tap on the rest of the points while giving a voice to how you feel. So we can do tapping on overall anxiety. We can talk about maybe some stress that comes along with the pandemic. We can also do something on cravings. Um, what comes to, where would you like me to focus the tapping? What do you think? Yeah, I think a lot of people right now are home. And if they're lucky and fortunate enough to still have a job, they're trying to balance a job with their kids being home, potentially online learning or in hybrid based schools, uh, like a lot of the schools that or the schools that my girls go to. So you're just trying to live in a world where you don't feel like you have any control and you're overwhelmed. So I think that is a lot of people out there right now. And I would love to do a tap on that. Yeah, absolutely. Two things create stress, lack of control, and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's what we are all experiencing, a lack of control and uncertainty. And so it's normal to feel the stress. This is why we have to make a commitment to ease that stress, right? So it's okay to feel that stress, but we really need to make a promise to ourselves that now all the things we practiced before the pandemic, all those self-care things, now it's more important than ever. So with that, we're gonna, we'll tap on this sense of anxiety. Um, I love everyone who's listening to just close your eyes for a moment and check in and just take a moment to reflect on how much has been on your plate, all the uncertainty, the lack of control, the responsibilities, and notice if any anxiety shows up. And maybe you wanna call it something else. Maybe you rather call it just overall stress, overwhelm. Just notice what it feels like to you and notice what it feels like in your body. Maybe you're feeling a bit of tightness or pressure in your chest, tightness or pressure in your stomach or in your jaw. Maybe your back feels tight. Just check in with your body and how your body is interpreting this stress. And you can also give that a number again from zero to 10, either take a mental note or write it down. And we're going to start doing some tapping and just repeat after me, either out loud or in your mind. So we're going to tap on the side of the hand and repeating after me, even though I've been feeling overwhelmed, so you can go ahead and repeat after me if you don't mind. I will, even though we, I've been feeling overwhelmed. I accept myself and how I feel. I accept myself and how I feel. Even though there's so much on my plate. Even though there's so much on my plate. And I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. And I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I honor all of these feelings. I honor all of these feelings. Even though there's so much going on. Even though there's so much going on. And I'm experiencing all of this anxiety. And I'm experiencing all of this anxiety. I accept myself and how I feel. I accept myself and how I feel. We're going to tap through the points and we're going to simply start by giving a voice to this feeling. So tapping on your eyebrow point, repeating after me, all this anxiety. All this anxiety. Side of the eye, this tension in my body. This tension in my body. Under the eye, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. Under the nose, and it's too much for one person. And it's too much for one person. 
under the mouth, all of this anxiety. All of this anxiety. Collarbone, all of this stress. All of this stress. Under the arm. I'm at my breaking point. I'm at my breaking point. Top of the head. I wish things were easier. I wish things were easier. Eyebrow. I wish I was having an easier time. I wish I was having an easier time. Side of the eye. But I'm really struggling. But I'm really struggling. Under the eye. And that's okay. And that's okay. Under the nose. I've been really hard on myself. I've been really hard on myself. Under the mouth. I've been pushing myself to do better. I've been pushing myself to do better. Collarbone. But these are really hard circumstances. But these are really hard circumstances. Under the arm. I am worthy of my own kindness. I am worthy of my own kindness. Top of the head. It's safe to be easy on myself. It's safe to be easy on myself. Eyebrow. Even though things aren't perfect. Even though things aren't perfect. Side of the eye. I am enough. I am enough. Under the eye. Even though I don't have all the answers. Even though I don't have all the answers. Under the nose. Right now and right here, I am safe. Right now and right here, I am safe. Under the mouth. Even though I don't know when this will end. Even though I don't know when this will end. Collarbone. Right now and right here, I am safe. Right now and right here, I am safe. Under the arm. Giving myself more credit. Giving myself more credit. Top of the head. Accepting where I am right now. Accepting where I am right now. All right. Now take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. And again, just check in with yourself. Notice that old anxiety and notice if the number moved at all. Maybe it just went from an eight to a seven or a 10 to a four. But just notice what came up. And sometimes other emotions can come up. Sometimes when we realize how hard we've been on ourselves, we can feel a little choked up and that shows us where we can spend more time tapping. That was just a few rounds. I think it was just four rounds, but I hope that gives you an idea of what the process looks like, that it always starts with honoring how you feel because you have to weed before you plant the seeds. If we just try to be positive and tell ourselves we got it. There's part of our brain that wants to yell BS. It's not true. Yes. I'm suffering. I'm struggling. But if you give yourself a moment to validate your experience, to honor how hard it is, then you can move in a way that feels gentle. And if at any point you say something positive and it doesn't feel true, it just means you need to spend a few more minutes with that voice honoring how you're feeling as you're relaxing your body. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was fantastic. I really love the line of right here and right now I am safe. I think that's what you said, Yeah. Uh, which just lets you breathe. It just takes that nervous system down a notch and just say, okay, yeah, right. Maybe I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or a month from now, but right now, right now I'm safe. So I can absolutely see how that would work in that especially right in that moment when that woman was having a, a panic attack that night or someone was dealing with anxiety. So that was fantastic. A couple of questions I had is, um, how many times is there a, spe a specific amount to tap in each position or is it specific for the phrase and then you just keep moving around the body? Yeah, there's not a, a specific amount of taps. Usually it averages around maybe six or eight, but it's just to give yourself a few pauses while you say that statement. Yes. And then how do you know how many on the app it's going to walk you through, I'm sure. And it's going to guide it just like you guided me because you can tap, but you don't have an intention with it. So it's a little bit more challenging, uh, just, just to know the spots. So, um, how do you know how many times to go through it? Yeah. So if you, this is the reason why I do love the app and I love tapping meditations because it's sometimes when you're in in it, it's very hard to navigate through it. And so having a guide can be really helpful. But if you're beginning to feel more comfortable with tapping and you wanna have an experience by yourself, 
The key, and this is what the studies are showing, the key is actually the tapping, not the words. And that's where people get hung up. They're like, I don't know what to say and I don't know how long to say it for. It's actually the tapping that's calming your nervous system. So you can simply sit in a feeling while you tap. Um, Another strategy is to pretend you're talking to a friend. Tell the story and keep telling the story of what happened and why you're upset until you can tell the story and you're finding that it feels a little lighter, it feels a little Mm. easier. So maybe that's just telling the story about the phone call you got two or three times. Um, You say it and you keep tapping until you feel more relaxed. And then the brain's like this vacuum because once you begin to pull out these weeds, once you begin to take away the charge of that emotion, your mind tends to put something in its place. And so oftentimes people start to look at the situation differently Mm -hmm. or they get some insights of, you know, maybe I am doing enough. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Maybe I should honor all of these achievements, whatever it is, you can then begin to move to something more positive as long as it feels True. It doesn't have to feel 100% true, but you want to be able to say it without having the reaction of, oh, that feels, you know, telling myself I'm doing enough feels uncomfortable. That's when you want to stick with your current reality, your current experience. Mm. Yeah, that's that's great advice. Uh, One thing, too, is I I have seen people recite the story like you've been just basically having that conversation with a friend out loud, no one else is in the room, whatever it might be. And they're just moving through the points. They're not stopping like for the next, they're just kind of moving through. And it's almost like, yeah, a tapping meditation. They're just kind of flowing. It's almost like a yoga pose. Like they're just moving through a sequence. Would that be okay as well? Yeah, absolutely. You can move through the sequence. And not only that, you can really focus on one point if if you want to. If you, for example, um, the collarbone point is a great one. Mm. So if you're really so in the that stressful feeling that you're thinking, I don't even remember the nine points. I remember three or I remember one. Just do what you remember. Um, my mom for 25 years was a school psychologist in an elementary school here in Connecticut. And she, the kids would come in just, you know, crying because they're elementary school kids. They'd just be so upset. They couldn't get the words out. And my mom would say, okay, tap on your collarbone point. Mm. And then just tell me what happened at recess. And just by tapping on their, the collarbone point and getting back in their body, they were able to calm themselves and begin to articulate what happened. Yeah. I I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like laughing to myself right now because that point I know specifically relates to the kidneys and the kidneys house the stress in the body. And so that makes total sense. I would say uh, that, and it's just funny that correlation. Yes. If you can pick one point, might as well work in the kidneys, the adrenals sit right on top of them. So that that's, that's funny. That makes a lot of sense though. And it might be all that kids can do, you know, maybe like uh, kids can't remember the sequence. That's okay. Just yeah. Tap one inch below that collarbone and, and, uh, and keep working through the process. But at the same time, you're allowing yourself to vent, right? Especially with that karate chop point, like you're giving yourself permission to acknowledge your failings. And that alone, especially if you take a little bit of a breath with it, will hopefully just kind of calm down that, that nervous system as well. A lot of us are holding in these feelings and they're there, but we're scared to acknowledge them and we're scared Mm. to feel them. And so it's just this heavy weight. And what so often happens when someone begins to tap because their body feels calm, they feel safe enough to begin to acknowledge these feelings. Mm. And so oftentimes we get tears, not all the time, but a lot of times people are saying, I started crying and I just burst into tears. And it's this release because you've been carrying something for so long and now your body has a moment to let it go. So um, crying is normal. Tears are normal. Yawning happens a lot too. Your body's fully relaxing. Um, But it really comes down to giving yourself a space to feel an emotion in a way that's safe. Um, Tapping has been approved by the VA and it's used by by trained therapists to um, help those who have PTSD. And I think PTSD is such a physical response to things. And so by tapping, you're allowing your body to know that it's safe. And so it's easier to work through things when your body feels safe. Yeah, yeah, 100%. What about for a lot of people out there, they 
maybe they have some childhood trauma, they're working with a the therapist, they're, but they don't know. It's, it's so repressed, they don't really know what it is. They don't know what's wrong. I work with a lot of people in my practice where they're stressed and it's like so many things, they don't even know what's wrong. Is it a good idea to use a mantra or just to sit with that feeling and tap? What would, what would I mean, again, we're not giving medical advice, but what would be a good uh, protocol for that person to maybe start to use? There tends to be a lot of stress and pressure around not knowing, right? Mm -hmm. So even you think there might be a repressed memory, but you don't know what it is. And there might be a part of you that believes that unless you get all the answers, you're never going to be able to feel good again. Mm -hmm. And so there's these beliefs um, that can be really limiting. And so sometimes it, it's always about starting with where you are. So if you're in this moment saying, I really need support, but I don't know where to start even though I don't know where to start and I don't even know what's really wrong, I accept mm. myself and all of these feelings, even though I can't figure this out and I'm so frustrated and I feel all of this pressure, I accept myself and all of these feelings. And that in itself can be a really powerful experience. I also believe in the power of intuition in the sense of it, you know, the, the Tapping Solution app is a free download. We have a lot of free tapping meditations, but if you just look through it, notice what catches your attention. Notice what feels um, like something you'd wanna try, and that can be very helpful as well. So I do wanna say that it, when you're dealing with trauma and stress, you do wanna work with a professional, but a lot of therapists are recommending tapping as a way to self soothe between sessions. Yes, Tapping is about feeling safe. So if you are by yourself and it doesn't feel safe to tap on something, then you shouldn't. It's all about safety, right? So mm -hmm. you can tap on any experience as long as while you're tapping, you're feeling grounded and within your body. If it ever feels too much, open your eyes, take a deep breath, notice your feet on the floor, and you know, even just tapping on your collarbone point without getting specific into that memory, but getting yourself back into the present moment. That's great. How So if someone is able to sign up for the app, do they get to choose the right tapping meditations for them? Do you guide people to choose a specific one? Talk to us a little bit more about how we would get benefits from that. Yeah, so when you download the Tapping Solution app, like I mentioned, it's a free app, and we have over 30 free tapping meditations. The mm -hmm. two most popular ones are releasing anxiety okay. and quieting the racing mind, which is a sleep support tapping meditation. So those two by far have been our um, most popular, but we have over 250 tapping meditations, wow. and we have them in categories. So if you know you're really struggling with something physical, we have a section called support your healing. So it's basically just supporting your own healing journey, and we focus on different body ailments um, from psoriasis to back pain. Um, so it's really about kind of scrolling around and seeing what catches your attention. We have, um, we're starting to bring in some great guests. We had our first guest, Dr. Damon Silas. He's a psychotherapist who specializes in stress and trauma. And he did a five day series on depression support. It's for those who have been diagnosed with depression, but also those who've just been feeling down. You just feel kind of stuck in a rut, stuck in a fog. It's a great way to support you. And we always want to make it very clear that it's not the cure. It's, it's you know, you really want to do this in conjunction, especially when you're dealing with depression, with a, um, a trained therapist getting professional help as well. Without a doubt. And, and that's, I mean, that should be, uh, a standard. There is no silver bullet for anything. This is one more modality that Jessica is trying to share with us that has been shown and clinically and in the real world to work for people. And so, you know, discovering if you do have SIBO or candida or parasites or histamine issues, like those are still good things to do. But part of the healing process is also working with the body and exercise works for depression. Tapping works for anxiety, PTSD, depression. So these are all great things to, to start to do. And I know a lot of people out there who are dealing with depression and for them, 
to think about putting on exercise clothes and exercise, even though they know it's good for them, is just not happening yet. So what if a segue would be to start just where they are right now in their seat and start to do some tapping? I think that's a, that's a really nice thing. I think people overlook the simplicity. I overlook the simplicity. I haven't been doing tapping for a long time. Now we're having this conversation. I'm going back to tapping because why not? Like there's no real downside to it. So that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, honestly, the worst thing that can happen is nothing. And so absolutely give it a try. That's that's fantastic. How can our readers connect, our readers, our listeners and viewers connect with you on social media? And what's the best website to also download the app? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's the tapping solution.com is our website. If you're interested in geeking out on some of the science and research, we have a lot of that on the main page as well. Mm -hmm. And the app you can download on um, on Google, the Google store or um, iTunes, and it's called the tapping solution app. And uh, you can follow me on Facebook or Jessica Ortner or Instagram, the same Jessica Ortner. And I teach a lot of uh, tapping tips through Instagram as well. That's fantastic. Anything else you'd like to share uh, with our community here today? Yeah, I'm going to um, provide for you guys in the show notes. Uh, for those who are healthcare practitioners, you do get free access to the app. We want to support anyone who's supporting other people during the pandemic. So we'll provide that link. And the the biggest, the most popular tapping meditations are free. So mm. if you have someone struggling with anxiety or struggling with sleep, definitely recommend the tapping solution app because just by getting the free version, they're still going to get a lot out of it. And that's fantastic. We have over 3000 integrative health practitioners alone, um, listening to the show. And so for them to be able to spread the word to, to their clients in conjunction with, uh, supplement protocols, et cetera, I think would be fantastic. So the more people that know, the better. Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge with all of us. Appreciate it. And hopefully we can have you back here soon. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.